Welcome in everybody to the campus of Ann Arbor Huron where the River Rats will be taking on in this game of the week the Pioneer Pioneers. We've got some water polo action for you. With me as always the man to my left, the Jacques Cousteau to my Bill Ballard, Pete Poyer. How are you? You always come up with something good, Nick. Thank you very much. How are you doing today? Excellent. Thank you. Really looking forward to this one. And we are underway in the pool. Huron versus Pioneer. Trying to get an opportunity on that and into the goal. And here I gets the first goal. Looked like number four Dane Hubers there, right in the middle in that slot position. And you can see that driver pass into Huber, just a little less than a one-timer, but he got his hand on that and just was right ready to go right there, right little, where he needed to be. A little lazy on defense for Pioneer there. They weren't up close. He had too much room to get a good hard shot off and too close to the net. Well, I'm curious if Huber, or, oh, there we go. And just like that, here on scores again. Looked like Edwin Barnett on the goal, number 12. Definitely Barnett there. You can see him streaking in after he got that driving forward in that slot position. Uh, taking advantage of uh, freshman Sam Bassett Kennedy there in goal for the Pioneers. Their uh, usual goaltender is out this game. And uh, Sam Bassett Kennedy, the freshman, has been uh, tasked with getting in the way of this potent River Rat offense. And no goal there. We had whistle before the shot. Goal scorer on that last one, Edwin Barnett. Worth mentioning quickly that he is the son of first year coach Paul Barnett for the River Rats. No penalty on here on. We have a swimmer in the penalty box, so Pioneer on the power play. And that is off, blocked by the goalkeeper. And here on will get the possession back. Golden opportunity by the wayside for the Pioneers. Maybe just a little impatient uh, on that power play opportunity. Yeah, easy to get in that mindset, though. You're already down two to nothing. You want to try to do something as quickly as possible. But no, you're right on. That was a long pass and definitely could have waited a little bit longer there. Try nice. to give the old fake. Sean Lee, he's a senior, senior captain for the Pioneers. So again, maybe just a, a little anxious to try to get his team back on the, get his team on the scoreboard, period. Nice defensive play on that uh, opportunity by Jorge. Di Giovanni. And shot right at the goalkeeper. Hard shot, but easy save to make. And as a young, inexperienced keeper or player at all, it's important to make some of those routine plays. You can build up that confidence early on. Well, and conversely, the Pioneers might be looking to see where his weak areas are. It's a good call. Both teams getting a feel for each other here on this one. This is their first meeting of the year. I have another stoppage of play by the the boys in white, the Wonder Bread Twins. They got uh, Mitch Fountain right there. It's his fourth year officiating. Fourth year officiating. He's also a uh, head coach as well. By the way, you're going to split that bribe that he paid you to say that? <laughs> no? Of course, okay. always. I was walking up, and he said, get my left side. That's my better side. <laughs> Well, the referee is getting players in position before he resets the play and gets play back underway. Four minutes, 12 seconds to go here in the period number one. Wow. 
Long shot, save made. Now here we'll try and work it down. Uh, pass is intercepted and Pioneer will take over. Another interception by Huron, back down pool. Trying to take advantage of Pioneer back on their heels. Pioneer right there to make the defensive play. There's a long shot, kind of a looper, tried to get it to drop down underneath the crossbar. It was too high. Solid effort there by senior Cam Sir, though, to come from behind, kind of poke check it away from him, twist around and get his opportunity. Quickly shot it in with no cap on. Another goal for Huron. So they haven't marked it on the board yet. They're going to disallow that goal with the cap was off. Excellent work there by Cohen to work it around, work it in and out. Now they have put the goal on the board. So that makes it here on three and Pioneer nothing. We're approaching three minutes to play here in period number one. In that whole set position there, Evie Cohen was really allowed to just kind of do whatever he wanted there in the middle, pass out, bring it back, receive and take some time. Pioneer defense really needs to step up in front of their young freshman goaltender. Oh, no one there for the entry pass. Pioneer will grab it take over the possession. What a quick back and forth uh, match so far. The River Rats have been clearly the more aggressive of the two teams. Nearly caught the goalkeeper sleeping there. Senior Nick Ford in goal for the Rats. A nice spin move into the center. Quick shot and another score by the River Rats. Another Edwin Barnett goal. There you see Barnett driving in. A nice spin away. Just wonderfully done there by Nett. Spinning away from his man. Pushing him off with that offhand. His weak side hand. In order to protect the ball and protect his body as well. Very I think well someone's going to have to check the bottom of the pool for a pair of <laughs> swim trunks. Somebody was clearly faked out of theirs there on that play. You don't see the spin -a, a whole lot in water polo, so that's going to happen. Another close shot there by Pioneer. They've come close a couple of times here in this first period. Now, you said a minute ago, Pete, that it has been back and forth. The difference is that Huron is executing on their opportunities, and the Pioneers seem just a little, a little tighter, a, a little too pass. anxious. And into the net. Looks like that was kept out of the net. I thought that one in the net, but no score. It's still 4 nothing. No indication from the referees either. Definitely want to look at that play on replay when we get a chance. Right here on just like that, back down to try again. There's the looper. That one sails a little bit wide left. You see that wide side shot there. Wet, uh, wet shot. And what behind skipped. the net. Yep. Nice work down there in the truck. And as, you, as usual, our outstanding ca camera operators are right where they need to be, always in position. There's another quick shot and another score. Avi Cohen with his second goal from the whole set position right there. You can see Cohen just driving faster past his man. Just, just won the race to the ball. Just blew right past Sean Lee of the Pioneers. 
Well, here on up 5 nothing with uh, just about 35 seconds to go in period number one. Again, that's uh, Cohen's second goal here in this first period, as you mentioned. Uh, talking to Coach Barnett before the game, he told me he couldn't give me an approximation, but Avi Cohen has roughly between 50 and 60 goals on the season so far. Long shot as the shot clock was expiring for Pioneer. Couldn't work it down close. Oh, here I can work it for the last shot of the period. Under 10 seconds. No defense. And really the goalkeeper was kind of left to his own devices there. Was getting no help on defense. And Huron scores another goal. They've got sophomore Dylan Schmitzerly on that one. Getting in on the goal scoring action. Once again, Schmitzerly just flat out beats his man. Drove right past him, got to it, and left his goaltender just, for lack of a better term, naked there, waiting all by himself. And that will do it for period number one. It's a bloodbath in the pool in period number one as Huron scores six goals to make it 6 nothing at the end of one. We'll take a quick break and be back with more action here on CTN. Let me ask you a question. What do you value? How about access to your child's education, their football game, their swim meet, their high school musical, their academic future. Does that matter? What about your access to your government, your police, fire, and public safety, parks and recreation activities, state and local officials, the folks you elect to make decisions for your community? Is that worth anything to you? What about your rights, freedom of speech, to communicate your message to let your voice be heard. That's got to count for something, right? So let me ask you again, what do you value? How about public, educational, and government access television? It belongs to you. Let's keep it that way. to start period number two. We're here at Huron High School for Huron and Pioneer Water Polo. It was all Huron in period number one. Nick, you want to go over the goal scorers real quick? Let me get my sheet out here. It's a, it's a long and distinguished list. Like you, like you said, Pete, all Huron. Uh, Dane Huber started off the scoring at uh, 6.54, only seven seconds into this match, followed by goals from Edwin Barnett. He put two in the back of the net. Avi Cohen, the... Uh, Great, great goal scorer here for uh, here on. He's put two in, and Diller, Dylan Schmitzerly, excuse me, finished off, rounded out the scoring for here on in that first period. Race to the center of the pool. And one by Pioneer. They are awarded the possession. And that last goal coming with just seven seconds to go in period number one. Oh, Pioneer will look to pressure the Huron goalkeeper and try and get back in this match. That's a long shot over the net. Henry Schneehagen with the opportunity there for the Pioneers. Oh, ball out of bounds. Uh, Possession back to Pioneer. A long pass down pool, trying to catch the Huron defense sleeping, but they were right there to catch that ball. Yeah, aggressive play by Ford there to get that and then toss it back up to his offensive players. Well, Huron will back it out just 12 seconds ago on the shot clock. Long pass tailing 
Wide, a little fastball to the left of the goalkeeper and wide. Pioneer possession. The interesting thing is that, again, at the opening moments of this period, Nick, Huron is clearly aggr the aggressive team. Oh, you, you said it, Pete. And again, you're really seeing their offensive players on display. You talk about Cohen's fastball, but we're seeing it right again right there from Schmitzerly. And that one's sailing wide of the goalkeeper's outstretched arm and into the net in the corner for another Huron goal, making it 7 nothing in favor of the River Rats. Pioneer on offense, right in front of the net, being aggressively defended. Looked like uh, Edwin Barnett there with ordinary foul here and an opportunity for the Pioneers to get themselves on the scoreboard. And a Senior Sanchez Burks there couldn't quite do it and I saw a little Dikembe Matumbo from Nick Ford on that one. There was some finger wagging. There's another quick shot, and that sails wide. You see Schmitzerly one more time just blowing by his defender. Looks like Jack Houston for the Pioneers there, but Schmitzerly just pops up. Hard to say if you could even really see what he was going for, but uh, he got that elbow extended. It was a nice goal. Well, got the Pioneer defender a little bit out of position, just enough room to get that shot off and, and it get seems the like ball in the net. Those Pioneer defenders have been a little bit out of position most of this game. It seems like they're doing more chasing than anybody else. We'll reset the shot clock for the Pioneers. They'll start their offense once again. Long shot, chipped away. That was sailing towards just underneath the crossbar. And goalkeeper tipped that ball away just as it came in to the scoring uh, area. Oh, reset that, reset that shot clock once again. And even if far away from the net, Huron is defending aggressively. And again, given over to Huron, nearly lost possession. Oh, Huron will throw it back to the goalkeeper and reset their offense. Long pass down pool, race for it. Tipped away by Pioneer. And they will get the possession award. And a great defensive play there by Dane Hubers. Pioneer will knock it away. 3.45 to play here in period number two. Oh, Huron really keeping Pioneer from getting good position in front of the net to get really good scoring opportunities. They're having their shots from uh, way out. Sacklist more the probably the best opportunity for the Pioneers thus far this game, but he hit goalpost on it. And there's the lob shot just off the crossbar. That got past the goalkeeper, but uh, one of the goalkeeper's best friends, the crossbar, Absolutely. kept that ball out of the net. There you see Cohen once again getting full extension up out of the water. Didn't go for the heater on that one though, took a little something off it. And with another. persistence, you are rewarded. Avi Cohen with the hat trick now. And another goal, the eighth for the River Rats. That coming with 3.04 till halftime. I'm really they, kind of surprised Pioneer hasn't called a timeout yet in this, in this match. 
Yeah, that's a that's a great call, Pete. I'm not entirely sure what the what the thought process is. Oh, well, is that it? Nope. Maybe they're resigned to the uh, superior talent of Huron. I this would be, would be odd for an opposite team to come to that conclusion, but you know, they, maybe they feel they're at a disadvantage with the freshman goaltender as another goal is scored. Evie Cohen once again early in Machine often. Gun Cohen here with his fourth <laughs> goal of the match. <laughs> he went fastball that time and it was off the hand of the goalkeeper and into the net. Another offensive opportunity for the Pioneers by the wayside. Here on our look down pool once again. The Pioneers seemingly unable to defend their own goal. That one off the uh, upright. Pioneer with another opportunity to try and get off the schneid. And another Huron player comes in and knocks the ball away. Well, the Riverettes, uh, I don't think they could have played a better first half than this one right here. No, I completely agree. On both ends of the pool, um, again, starting everything out really great with Ford uh, starting his offense. Clearly, all of his offensive players are executing. And we've seen it the few times that the Pioneers have gotten down here. Uh, they're just doing a great job of playing aggressive, aggressive D. And well, we got this timeout. Time I called for just a little while ago. So there you see Coach Will Hart in his 16th season coaching men's water polo for the Pioneers. And uh, he, he openly admitted to me before the game, he said, this season's definitely going to be a process. He used the word process way more than one time in our brief conversation. And, uh, you know, again, he talked about uh, moving towards October when the state tournament happens. That's, that's what he's building towards. So a learning process, which you would do with a young team, obviously by their goalkeeper at, on this particular night, happens to be a freshman. So a learning experience hopefully will be uh, the, the takeaway here for the Pioneers. Absolutely. And, again, he's, uh, he's seeing a very potent offense from those River Rats. So this is going to be... Obviously, again, a trial by fire type thing, but you know, you're going to come away from it with some real positive experiences. It doesn't feel positive right now, but not down nine nothing. It no, doesn't. No. But you're not. You're probably not going to run into a lot of players like Avi Cohen uh, as you go forward in your career. Well, and you're going to get games like this from time to time, even with cross pool rivals such as these. <laughs> One minute, 40 seconds to go till halftime, and the long shot right under the crossbar and into the net. And Huron hit double digits. They're up 10 nothing. That was junior John Wang with that tip in. Call that an alley-oop, maybe? You see just a really, really long interior pass to the whole set position. Wang is there waiting, kind of got up and spun and just directed that thing where it needed to go. So what you're saying is John Wang didn't use a pistol. He used a long-range rifle this time. <laughs> yes, that is, that is exactly what I was saying. Well, after years of doing these games <laughs> together, you kind of get a feel for what the other is uh, talking about. A foul on Pioneer. Possession back to Huron. And a Pioneer there on the power play. Again, can't take advantage. Oh, the Huron onslaught continues. There's a quick shot, nice save there. The possession awarded to Pioneer. Under a minute to go until the half. And I'm sure it will be a welcome halftime for the Pioneers. Absolutely. 
Another long pass down pool. Pass back. Trying to get the Pioneers out of position. And the ball slipped out of the hands. A little bit of a nice defensive tip there by Pioneer. Well, they can't clear it. Huron will keep it back on offense. 21 seconds to go. Quick shot, save made. A couple of nice saves here by the freshman goalkeeper. I think the hope is that Bassett Kennedy can kind of build on that momentum a little bit. And again, those, those were not easy saves that he made. Clock is ticking down. Pioneer not going to get a shot off. And that will do it for the first half. It was all River Rats as they lead going into the break at 10 0. We will take a break and be back with second half action here on CTN Sports. My stumpy arms are best suited for browsing a2gov.org slash ctn. <coughs> for real, check us out at a2gov.org slash ctn. Okay, Bob, we got it. CTN Sports, bringing local sports to you. And welcome back to CTN Sports presentation of the Game of the Week. It's water polo from the campus of Huron High School. Huron River Rats lead the Ann Arbor Pioneer Pioneers 10 to nothing. A little bit of a surprise. Usually these matches are pretty close. But Pioneer with a young team. Still learning. In the pool and out. And it was all Huron with 10 goals in that first half. No, you're never going to expect 10 goals in one half. Once again, a, a four-goal onslaught in that second period for the River Rats, led once again by Abby Cohen. Dylan Schmitz really started off the scoring in that period and was ended with 1.18 to go by just a beautiful, glorious, can't-wait-to-be-at-the-end-of-the-credits goal by John Wang. I 
There's another quick shot by Huron and another goal for the River Rats. Senior captain Alex Kapanen with the goal there. And I am quickly about to run out of space on my sheet where I'm tailing these goals. So this you go not, to the next page. This is not a small piece of paper, Pete. This is, is a legal not. pad. It is a large yellow legal <laughs> pad, approximately 11 by 8 and a half inches. That is approximately true. Unfor you know, fortunately for us, they have the other side of the page. I'm not a wit rich man, Pete. I don't have a lot of pages. And paper's cheap. That's true. But here on his test take, Nick, Nick Wisniewski's paper allowance. <laughs> There's another nice intercept by Huron. Quick shot save made. Now let me tell you, these referees love the whistle. You know it's going off. There's no question about it. No gray area with that whistle. No. Let me tell you where one whistle blast would suffice. <laughs> We're going to do seven or eight times just to make sure everybody heard it here with the nice echo. There is there's a bit of an echo in a pool. Who knew? In the their particular defense. acoustics of this pool are... Uh, in their defense, when you're down there in the pool, it's going to be hard to hear stuff. I don't know how you can't hear that whistle. <laughs> it's reverberating. It's reverberating through the waves in there? I can see that. Reverberating through my head. <laughs> Oh, another takeaway by the Huron defense. I really think that Huron just stronger, more talented, more experienced, and a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. There's the skip shot and into the net for another Huron goal, their 12th of the match. And just the fact that Cohen had so much time to stand there in the whole set and just toy with the freshman. I mean, he's got he's, he's still got nobody coming in. Just up and down, up and down. You've got three guys closing in on him. Well, and the he, first guy back, you know, if he leaves his man, he can always pass it and score from the angle as opposed to being, you know, blank uh, right head on. So he, and even the defensemen are a little bit uh, out of position, and they need help. They need more than just one guy coming back. Foul on Huron. Piner with the shot off the upright. I think this is another something you will learn with time is being able to direct that shot on net as opposed to just wide. No, you're 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 definitely right about that one. So a lob shot. I'm sorry, pass there. And another skip shot that skipped so hard it went off the crossbar. That's, yeah, that was a really strong skip. You put a little too much mustard on that, and that boy jumped right up and hit the crossbar. Well, again, here unable to work past the defenders quickly. That's, a, that's, that's strength and another goal. Evie Cohen once again puts it through on that one. Again, when you're that close in the whole set, like you're probably a, a meter, a meter and a half out. And there's Just, another round from the machine gun. Yep. But uh, I mean, again, I mean, that's excellent positioning by Cohen as well. Like he turned around, he used his body nicely to get some uh, space, be water I should say, between him and his defender. And he had a nice open look at that. Under two minutes to go in period number three. So I got to think right now if I'm Pioneer, my main goal is score, I guess is your first main goal. But secondly, try to kill some clock. Try to give your goaltender just some time to breathe down there, work it around, pass the ball around, work on some things, just crush that uh, shot clock. And that shot over the net. A 
Huron works it into the center of the pool. Pioneer getting a little bit more aggressive on defense, and that shot was, the save was made, and that pass way too far, all the way to the other goalkeeper, and back come the River Rats. There's a quick shot knocked away. Sanchez Burks right there with a nice, nice defensive play, getting his hand up. One minute up. to play in the third period. It seems like the offensive players for Pioneer have the same issue the defenders have. Just not enough strength to get past those defenders and get a clean shot off. So head coach Will Hart not wrong in his assessment of his team before the match. No, definitely not. But again, um, regardless, you, you don't want to see this. And, and it's tough as a coach or even as an announcer to try to find some things to build on when you're down 13 to nothing. Well, with the proper strength and experience <laughs> and, and a little in a learning experience, Nick, you'll get there. Fair enough. Fair enough. Oh, last 15 seconds of the period, period number three. You're on with another chance, and that one off the goalkeeper and into the net for goal number 14 for Huron. Junior Brandon Gang on that opportunity there. Just such a hard shot. That looked like another one from Cohen. Looking at it on the replay. And that's going to do it for period number three. No goal is the call as that came after the clock expired. We'll take a quick break and be back with period number four right here on the Game of the Week CTN Sports. Catch up on FYI and other CTN programs at a2gov.org slash watch CTN. And welcome back to CTN Sports Game of the Week. We've got a lopsided one here as the River Rats in their home pool lead it over the Pioneers 14 to nothing. A I guess the only question now, Nick, is when, do they, when does the running clock start? You got to think Does it running clock any start? Times. I mean, it runs pretty frequently anyway. You're the rules master. I will so. look into this a little bit. I'm going to say if it's going to happen, it's got to be 15, right? But again, they, they are running for the well, most part as it is. Since it's 14 and nothing and the clock still isn't running, that's <laughs> probably a fair conclusion. We will see. I think we will get that opportunity. I'll tell you, the clock has been shortened from seven minutes to five minutes for the second half due so, to the score. So there you go. There is... Uh, some of the charity rules going on right there. That was a high one. A little hard and a little wide. Well, they can't all go in. Little Pioneer with the opportunity there. That one sails wide to the left. 
They are going to keep possession down at the Huron end of the pool, though. And again, that's definitely to the overall the Pioneers' benefit. If they can, if they can work some clock here, try to work on a few things. Hey, and there you go, and then and get, on the, and then get on the board. a great backward shot. Jack Houston on the score there, and Pioneer breaks through and gets their first goal of the match. Houston did not have a problem on that goal. And you see the defender really upset with himself that he allowed Pioneer to score. Right, you know, you know they want that shot out for just everybody in, in a matchup like this, in the crosstown rivalry like this. And knocked away. He gets it back and, oh, he tried to tip it in and off the crossbar. And the goalkeeper is trying to get it away and finally does. Ben Hires almost tipped that one in. Again, just a much larger individual than Pioneer's goalkeeper, but couldn't quite manage to, to direct that where he needed it to be. Well, Pioneer, after allowing that goal, look a little angry with the Pioneers as they're being very aggressive as they score another goal. Dylan Schmitz early once again. I look a little upset that they lost that shutout. And I think if you're gonna try to find some motivation, it's little things like that where they're gonna come in to do that. And Schmitz early just right from the whole set position. He had a defender in front of him, but still had some water between him had a pretty open look at that net. Well, 3.15 to play here in the match. Pioneer finally getting on the board here late in the match in the fourth period. And as you can see here on dominating. Kind of a soft liner there, knocked away by the goalkeeper for Huron. Pioneer will keep possession. Matt Dahl with the opportunity there. And again, here's another opportunity, I guess, for the Pioneers. Just try to, you know, sub in some guys that don't see a whole lot of action all the time. Try to get them that game experience. Try to get them an opportunity to uh, work on their conditioning. I try to cross pool pass there, trying to get an open uh, offender, if you will, an open shot, but that was too far. Here I will reset it. Quick conversation between the officials there. Pioneer looking for goal number two as they're closing in on the penalty. Knocked away. And Huron will get the possession back. And the River Rats will try and resume their duties as the hammer to Pioneer's nail. <laughs> See that long opportunity, but just a lot of players in the way there, a lot of hands. Not the greatest angle to begin with. But when you're trying to put it in the perimeter that way, take it where you can get it, I guess. Well, they tried to close in and make that shot shorter. Uh, but when you compress everybody in a smaller area, obviously, more defenders in a smaller zone, easier to defend. Yeah, that's just physics right there. There's a long shot off the upright. Pioneer still with it. Long shot, that's knocked away. Uh, the River Rat going into the penalty area. Well, Pioneer on the power play once again. 143 to go in the match. Pioneer looking to find things to build on. And that shot was blocked. There's a shot that's knocked away. 
Huron not getting, not only getting great goal scoring at one end, but great goalkeeping at the other. No, definitely. Ford is definitely doing what a senior leader should do. He is playing uh, great defense. He's made some great saves. But again, he's been an integral part of the offense as well, making some really, really nice passes all, uh, all evening long. But here you see Ford that doing that what he's shot. supposed to be doing. There it is. Ball heading for the far corner of the net, knocked away. And he really got up, really extended to knock that down with two hands. And there's another point blank shot, save me. Ford with river rat-like reflexes there. So under a minute to go in the match. You're on trying to milk the clock off a little bit there. You see a very nice opportunity. Just kind of a, a backhand, if you will. Didn't go for the full spin around. Just tried to catch Ford off his game a little bit. But, but a similar shot to when they scored on. Yes. And they work off all of the shot clock time, which leaves 29 seconds to go in the match. Oh, well, shot clock off. And a Pioneer goalkeeper taking time off the clock. I guess they're just resigned to the fact that this is going to be a mismatch from the start to the finish as Huron will come away with the 15 to 1 victory here in their home pool. Last five seconds ticking off the clock and that is the case as Pioneer is cashed in for the last few seconds and that'll do it. We are going to take a quick break and be back with more right here on CTN Sports. Down here poolside with Coach Barnett after the match. Uh, first off, Coach, tell me a little bit about Evie Cohen today. Uh, he's, you know, he's our catalyst. He's our leading scorer, so things kind of revolve around him. Um, I think he did a really good job. Sometimes he tries to do a little too much, but I think he was within his game today, and um, he's all, he's got great fundamental skills. So we try to take advantage of that, and uh, he had a really good game. I mean, everybody on your squad seemed to have a pretty good game. Tell me about the importance of a crosstown victory like this. Oh, it's always huge. We respect Pioneer. They're always very good. It's, a, it's a, our biggest rival. Um, so we uh, definitely appreciate when we get a chance to get a win because that doesn't happen all the time. And uh, we're just going to feel good about this one and move on. Uh, lastly, about uh, your goaltender, Ford. He was obviously a huge part, only one goal given up, but a huge part of the offense as well. Can you tell me about uh, his participation tonight? Yeah, Nick is a, is a player who's been playing for a long time, uh, probably since he was about seventh or eighth grade. Uh, he really knows the game inside and out, which is very helpful because he triggers our counterattack when he makes the save. He's able to get the ball out to the right person, and, and that makes it real easy for our offense to set up and do some good things. Lastly, what do you tell your guys going into the locker room here tonight after this one? Uh, good win, but let's refocus and you know build on this from here. We got other things, uh, other goals for the season. So, always saying the right thing as expected, Coach. Thanks a lot, Pete. Thanks, Nick and Coach Barnett for that post-match interview. I'd like to thank all the people that make this production possible: our director Rob Cross, audio by Tim Nagai, replay by Jill Andrews, computer graphics by Joe Dahl, our camera people Gage Shaughnessy and Rich Muso. For Nick Wisniewski, this is Pete Poyer. Once again, the final from our game of the week on CTN Sports. It's here on 15 and Pioneer 1.